Bonfont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's play, The River Finds a Master. Tonight's star, Robert Young. The year 1814. A time when... On our western rivers, the steamboat was a new, unperfected invention, lacking the power to go upstream against the current. The place? The river landing at Louisville, where the newly built steamboat, the Washington, lies docked. It's late at night, and the ship is dark. On the shore, a gentleman strolls up, looks proudly for a moment at the steamboat. Then he frowns suspiciously, hesitates, then walks quickly aboard the boat. There. Anyone in here? It's me, William. Henry Shreve. Henry, good heavens. I thought you were home and in bed. I was. Until I thought of a way to make this confounded valve work proper. So I got up and come here and fixed it. <laughs> you would. Does uh, Mrs. Shreve know it? No, she didn't wake up. Well, she will. And she'll be down here after you. You need sleep, Henry, for tomorrow. I know, but... It's uh... not every day you take your first steamboat on our maiden voyage. I know, William, and I'm mighty grateful to you for making it possible by putting up the money for this boat. You're grateful. <laughs> you only designed her and built her, and now you're her captain. <laughs> and while I sit comfortably in Louisville, you're going to take her all the way down to New Orleans, then try to bring her back up, past snags and sandbars. I'll bring her up. Don't you worry. Well, if you can, if you do bring her up, I'll tell you something, Henry. You and I are going into partnership. What's that? And we'll really build steamboats. Whole fleet of them. And, uh, well, I, I just hope you and Mrs. Shreve have no objections to being rich. Not a one, Mr. Ellis. Oh. Not the slightest. Well, where did you come from? Oh, uh, evening, my love. Oh, so you did come after your wandering husband. Yes, I woke up and... Henry. I know, Mary, I know. I need sleep. But not as much as this valve needed fixing. Take him home, Mrs. Shreve, quick before he finds something else to tinker with. Come to think of it, this joint here could stand a little... Uh... Henry? I'm coming, my love. I'm coming. Henry, what did Mr. Ellis mean about our being rich? All I heard... He is... said we'll be partners, that we'll build steamboats, a whole fleet of them. Darling, how wonderful. Won't it be nice to be rich? We can have our own big white house overlooking the river and a carriage with a mixed I'll buy you a Paris gown for every day in the year. <laughs> every other day. We mustn't be extravagant. But, Mary, that's just what I want to be. So to make up for all the years when I was just a flatboatman. For all your scrimping and doing without so I could buy books and tinker with steam engines. But it was worth it, darling. Every bit of it. And I'll be so proud of you tomorrow when the steamboat pulls away and you're standing on the upper deck and the crowd's cheering. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, William. See you in about 50 days. Good luck, Henry. Fifty days, Henry Shreve had said. But fifty, sixty, then seventy days went by with no word from the Washington. Mary Shreve and William Ellis grew more and more anxious, hardly ever left the river landing. And at last, on the 73rd day, late in the afternoon... Listen. Listen, Mr. Ellis, listen. It's the Washington. It must be. Yes, see the smoke? And here she comes around the bend. Here she comes. Yes, but wait a minute. Something's wrong. See there, she's backing. She's coming in stern first. She could come in sideways for all I care. She's here and she's floating. Henry's done it, Mr. Ellis. He's brought a steamboat upriver all the way to Louisville. He said he'd do it and he's done it. <laughs> Get 
congratulations, Henry. Congratulations. Oh, darling. Oh, Henry, I... I there really now, it's a kiss I want, not tears. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and now, Henry, you think you could tell me what happened? Well, let's go into the cabin. It's quieter there. Ah. Huh. When did it happen? Four days ago, we hit a snag, sir, and stove in the bow. Only way I could keep her afloat was to back her. She'll have to go back to the shipyard for a new bow. A snag, huh? They're getting worse every year. Regular underwater forests in places. It's like going through a maze. It takes a day to go five miles. You know, if something isn't done about them, steamboats are going to be wrecked as fast as they're built. Well, I've got news for you. Something will be done. Yep, story in the paper here that the Army engineers are going to clear them all out. Clear out the snags? Well, that is news. How they uh, aim to do it? Well, didn't say, but they'll figure some way, you can be sure. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, now, young man, I've got something here that might interest you. An agreement. Setting up a corporation. Now, here, have a look. Mm-hmm. Mary. Mary, look here. The Shreve River Live. Oh, darling. We'll be equal partners, Henry. And we're going to build and operate steamboats. Dozens of them. The Shreve River Line. That's it right there, Bert. Hold it steady. Hold it steady. Now you men swing the log right across the bow and fasten it exactly like the other logs. Over that place where she hit the snag. What was that? Sounded like a cannon. Must be the Army engineers blasting out snags down by the point. Blasting them out? Well, that'd be something to see now. That's right, men. Doesn't matter how it looks, just make the bow strong so we can get her upriver to the shipyard and have her fixed proper. Uh, Bert, take over, will you? Right, sir. I think I'll take a little trip down to the point. Same as before. The snag's right where it was. You see, Captain Shreve, it just won't work. Gunpowder isn't the answer. Well, you tried pulling him out, Colonel, with a block and tackle? Yes, we tried that, too. I don't know, Captain. I just don't know. But there must be some way to get him out. There's got to be. Our steamboats will be wrecked as fast as they're built. You mean, if they're built at all? But they've got to be built. But the country out here can't grow without the steamboat. No, I suppose not. Well, Captain, maybe you'd like to give the problem some thought. Yes, I will, sir. You can bet I will. Oh, Henry, watch out. Isn't that a snag? No, no, it's just a, just a shadow on the water, isn't it? Mm-hmm. My, she's fast. Goes upriver just like it was down. She'll have twice the speed after she gets her new bow at the shipyard. Really? Sure, all those logs across the bow are slowing us Henry, up. what's that? There, ahead where the river narrows. A snack? And this time, Mary, my love, you're right. Stand aside a little, now, so I can the speaking to. Bert, throttle her down, snag ahead. God, she slows, Henry. Wait a minute. Henry. Henry, something's wrong with the throttle. Slow her down, Bert. can't do it, Henry. The throttle's jammed. You've got to or we'll crash. Henry. I can't. I can't. Take the squeezer, boy. No, no room to get by. Hold on, Bert. We're going to crash. Mary, get away from the window. Hold on. We're going to... Mary, are you all right? Yes, yes. Are we damaged badly? Can't see from up here, but it sounded bad. There's Bert out on the bow. Bert, can you see? What's the damage? Believe it or not, Henry, there ain't no damage. What do you mean? It was the snag that got damaged. The snag. We knocked it to pieces. What did he say, Henry? He says the snag was damaged. Those big logs across our bow. Mary, we've knocked the snag to pieces. <laughs> Plans, you say, Henry? For our next steamboat, huh? Yeah, let's see them. No, these are plans for something else, William. Turn along if you'd step a little closer to the table and hold this end down while I unroll it. Oh, certainly. Thank you. Well, 
There you are, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What in the world is this one boat or two, Captain? Well, it's two boats, actually. Two small but very powerful steamboats. But they're joined together amidships. And there's a great, well, a ram, you'd call it, built across their bows. What is it, a warship? Yes, Captain. I think it might work. Now, wait a minute. What might work? Have patience with a stupid old man. William, remember I told you that going upriver, we ran head-on into a snag? Yes, and you... What? You mean you're going to crash this contraption into snags? That's right, and batter them to pieces. Huh. How do you know it won't be the other way around? Well, I don't. But the snags just float down river then and take root somewhere else. No, sir, with these gin poles here, we haul the broken snags onto our decks where we saw them into firewood for our boilers. Remarkable, Captain, remarkable. Leaves only one question. Will you build this for us at government expense? Henry build it? Well, he, he won't have time, sir. He's going to build steamboats. Please, and... William, give me just three months. But, Henry... Don't you I... see, if this works, if we can clear the rivers, it'll mean everything to us. It'll mean fast boats, big boats, and most of all, safe boats. Yeah. Yeah, very well, Henry. But after three months, you understand, if you aren't ready to build steamboats, I'll have to find another partner. I'll be ready. Don't you worry about that. Before the three months are up, I'll be ready. <laughs> Anyway, she floats, Colonel. Even if she does handle like a wash tub. Hardly a thing of beauty either, eh? <laughs> Where are you taking her, Captain? Just down the river a bit to the point. I told Mary and William to watch from the shore there, near a certain snag I've got in mind. A big one. It's been sending boats to the bottom for as long as anybody remembers. Besides, it's uh, right close to shore in case we have to swim for it. Snag ahead. That is ahead there off the point? That's the one. Big and black and twisted. Our first victim... Or it may be, we'll be one of hers. Snag dead ahead, sir. Steady on your course. And hit that snag with every bit of speed we've got. Colonel, if you want to say a few prayers, wouldn't be a bad time for it at all. We return to our cavalcade story, The River Finds a Master, starring Robert Young. Henry Shreve, a pioneer steamboat captain on the Western Rivers, has invented a strange new craft, a floating battering ram which he hopes can destroy the snags which clutter the rivers and threaten the future of steamboating. Now, with Shreve preparing to crash his boat into a snag for the first time, his wife Mary and his partner Ellis watch apprehensively from the shore. Oh, look, Mr. Ellis. They're burning pitchwood. The smoke's turning black. And look at it pour out. Getting quite a head of steam. I almost can hear the hissing from here. He's turning her. Heading right this way. Oh, my. Could he have picked a smaller snag to begin with? Just look at that black monster out there. Here he comes. Here he comes. Just look at those tide wheels spin. There's so much spray I can't even see. Oh, yes. Yes, you can see him now at the wheel. Here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> It's all right, my dear. It's all right. Uh, uh, Mrs. Shreve. Mrs. Shreve. Oh, good heaven, she's fainted. Why, of course, I feel all right, Henry. The woman's privileged to faint now and again when the occasion calls for it. Some more coffee, Mr. Ellis? Yeah. Well, Henry, are you ready to go back to the more profitable business of building steamboats? Why, yes, William, of course I am. Good. Henry's going to let me decorate the cabins on his next boat, Mr. Ellis. And I've some marvelous ideas. Oh, uh, more coffee for you, Colonel. Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. But uh, perhaps you'd spare your husband for a moment while uh, 
we take a turn around the deck? Of course. Mr. Ellis can hardly wait, I know, to hear all about my elegant color scheme. Beautiful night, eh, Colonel? Yes, it is. Captain, I'm going to ask you a question, even though I'm afraid I think I know what your answer will be. You see, Captain, what you did today was was magnificent. But it was only a, a spectacular beginning. The Army engineers will want to build dozens of your snag boats, whole fleets of them. We want to clear the Mississippi, the Ohio, the Missouri, all the rivers, even the Red River of the South with its 150 miles of impassable log jam. The Great Raft, they call it. Yes, I know it well. We want to do all this, but we can't. Not until we find a man to direct the entire operation. A man who knows machinery, who knows boats, who knows how to handle men, and, above all, who knows the rivers mile by mile. Without such a man, a man like you, Shreve, who's willing to spend perhaps a dozen years at it, the rivers will likely never be cleared. Well, sir, I, uh... I know you want to build steamboats and make a fortune. Don't blame you. Not a bit. There won't be any fortunes made in river clearing, I'm sure of that. But you'd be doing a job that needs to be done, that has to be done, for the country's good. I know, sir, I know. But, you see, I have, uh, obligations. And that is, I, uh... I understand, Captain, perfectly. And I'll see if I can't find someone else. And, Henry, each cabin will be completely different. It'll be the most... Well, an elegant floating hotel. And people will... Henry, what is it? What's bothering you? Bothering me? Why, uh, nothing. It was whatever the colonel said to you, wasn't it? He, uh... Wants me to take on the job of clearing the rivers. All the rivers. Oh, no, Henry, you can't. Well, that is... Oh, I didn't mean... Clearing the river is a big job, Mary. And an important one. I know, dear, but... Somebody's got to do it. It must be a river man, Mary. You can't take an inland man and expect him to know the channels. It just isn't possible. But, Henry, you've done all you can. No, I haven't. I built a snag boat, but that's only the Henry, beginning. listen to me, I understand Colonel Long's problem, and I don't blame him for coming to you, but you've done your share. You've shown them how. Isn't that enough? It isn't only a matter of showing them how. It's getting it done. And that's something I could oh, do. please, Henry. Please, darling. Let them find someone else now. Someone who, who doesn't have so much to lose. It, uh, it means a lot to you, doesn't it, Mary? The Shree River Line. Well, of course, darling, but... Well, it's not only that. I, I'm thinking about you, too. It, it's your whole future, all those plans with Mr. Ellis. All right, Mary. Maybe you're right. Yes. Maybe they'd better find someone else. It was soon decided that St. Louis would be the headquarters of the Shreve River Line. And while Mary boarded a steamboat for St. Louis to establish a home for them, Henry Shreve went upriver to the shipyards and began his new steamboat. Colonel Long went, too, to build a new snag boat in an adjoining shipyard. Captain Shreve, good morning, sir. How are you, Colonel? Been hoping you'd pay us a visit. Hmm, going to be quite a steamboat. You must be well ahead of schedule. Well, sooner we finish, sooner I can join Mary in St. Louis. Oh, she like it there? You've uh, had a letter? No, not yet. Today, I hope. The Bluebell just docked. First boat from St. Louis since we got here. And uh, tell me now, how's the new snag boat coming? Nothing but problems, Captain. Kind I'm not too good at solving. And for the life of me, I don't know why the government wants it built anyway. I've told them snag boats are no use, unless we can find the right man to direct the work. You uh, can't find... Uh... Anyone? Oh, I found some rivermen who could do it, except none of them will. They'd rather build steamboats, and can't say I blame them. It's Captain something that... Shreve. Huh? Captain Shreve. Oh, over here, Captain. Shreve. Old friend of mine, Colonel, Captain Porter from the Bluebell. Oh. How are you, Porter? Good to... Porter, what is it? What's happened? I just docked, Henry, from St. Louis. Came as fast as I could. I got bad news for you. 
but it could be a lot worse. Well, what is it, Mary? Has, has Mary something... Mary's all right. Henry, the boat she was on was snagged about 40 miles out of St. Louis. Whole bottom was ripped off. She sunk in five minutes. No. What? We happened along, picked up survivors, and your Mary was among them. But 15 poor souls, they're, they're still missing. Oh, no. Where's Mary now? How is she? She's in the hospital in St. Louis. Got a broken ankle, a few bruises is all. Doctor says she'll be fine, matter of weeks. I saw her before I left. She did tell me not to, well, to tell you not to come or to worry. Not to come? Of course I'll come. When do you start south? As soon as we're loaded. Early tomorrow. I'm going with you, Porter. I'm going to marry. Mary. Mary, my love. How do you feel? Oh, Henry, I didn't want you to come. I'm fine, really. No, sit on the bed and kiss me again. Really, I'd have been up in a day or two if it hadn't been for my pesky ankle, but it's almost healed now. Oh, darling, I'm so lucky and so grateful to be alive. With the horrible Henry. Please, please don't think about it. But I can't get it out of my mind. I keep hearing the frightful sound the snag made ripping the bottom of the boat. And then the screams of the passengers and the water poured in and and all those poor creatures struggling. Please, with please, dear. I'm sorry. I... How, um, how's the new boat, Henry? Oh, come along fine, dear, fine. And the colonel and his new snag boat? Not, uh, going too well, I'm afraid. He hasn't found a man to... No? No one seems to, uh... Want the job. Oh. Henry, give me your hand. You know, I've been thinking here in this bed, and Henry, I know now how selfish I've been lately. I've thought only of all the fine, expensive things I wanted. To... Well, everyone wants those things, Mary. Don't blame yourself. But I thought of nothing else, and that was wrong. It was, Henry. When the Colonel asked you to take charge of clearing the rivers, I only thought of what we'd lose if you did, not what others would gain. Not all the lives that would be saved. But, Mary, I don't do want the job. Uh, that is, I... I know that's what you've been saying. But you don't really mean it. You said it only to please me. Not entirely, Mary. As it looks now, without you, the rivers will never be cleared. And I... Well, I know you, Henry Shreve. And I know that later on, every time a steamboat is snagged and lives are lost, you'll feel ashamed inside. And so will I, Henry, in my fine clothes and my big house. I'll feel ashamed, too. But, but, uh, Ellis and, uh, all our plans, the, the, the Shree River line. He can find another partner, Henry. Yes, that's just it. Of course he can find another partner. They'll build steamboats, big, fast, beautiful steamboats. And while we ram and batter away, clearing the rivers for them, they'll come steaming by us, flags flying, whistles blowing. Blowing a salute, Henry. A salute. A salute? Yes. Yeah, sure, that's right. Blowing a salute. Yes, yeah, sure. And then then we'll turn and acknowledge him. Taking our own sweet time about it, you understand. And we'll say you'd better salute us, you pretty painted ginger cracky overgrown wash tub. You'd better salute, because without us, you wouldn't even be on the river. And then we'll turn around and go back to work, Mary. Liking it or not, we'll go back to the work the good Lord must have meant for us to do. And so Henry Shreve took upon himself a task. Clearing the rivers, making them safe for the steamboats. Even the Red River of the South, blocked by a great raft of tumbled logs for as long as man could remember. Now it was open to navigation at last, all the way from Texas to the Louisiana city, which now is called Shreveport in his honor. And for 14 long years, the work went on, while Henry Shreve and his men slowly turned the cluttered rivers into great water highways, which would soon be crowded with steamboats plying up river and down, transforming a wilderness into an empire in the heartland of America. Our 
thanks to Robert Young and the Cavalcade players for tonight's true story. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by Warner Law, based on material from the book Lost Men of American History by Stuart Holbrook, published by Macmillan and Company. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zeller. And this is Cy Harris reminding you to be with us next week when the DuPont Cavalcade will present One Came Through, a little-known but fascinating story of the men who spread the alarm on the eve of Lexington and Concord. Our star, Wendell Corey. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you from the Belasco Theater in New York City and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Yeah.